Hello there, integrated science students, and welcome to the first video lesson here for Unit 4, Earth's Changing Surfaces. Inside of this unit, we are going to examine the external processes that are constantly at work reshaping and reconfiguring the surface of our planet here on Earth. We've already looked at the internal processes that are constantly reshaping planet Earth in Unit 2, and we looked at some of the materials that are created through those processes in Unit 3. Now, we're going to talk about some of the external forces and naturally occurring phenomenon that happen on the surface of this planet that are constantly reshaping the geology and geography of planet Earth. The first video lesson is going to be all about weathering and soil. And there's going to be four major topics within this video lesson. The first video topic is going to be all about the basics of weathering. The second video topic is going to look at mechanical weathering or physical weathering. Our third video topic is going to be all about chemical weathering. Within that third video topic, we're going to kind of tie a little bit about uh, uh, um, factors that can affect both mechanical and chemical weathering. And then finally, our fourth video topic is going to deal with soil. Without further ado, here we go. Defined, weathering is the process that breaks down materials here on Earth's surface, either the physical or chemical breaking down of materials on Earth's surface. Anytime we're talking about physical change, which we've discussed a little bit this year so far, we're looking at the change in size or shape of that item or that material. Anytime we're talking chemical change, we're talking about the composition being altered. So the chemical composition is changing. All right. So with weathering being the process that involves physical or chemical changing to materials due to the exposure to the external environment, okay, there are a few different agents that can affect the rate of weathering or, or how it transpires. Uh, agents such as water or air. Uh, gravity is also an agent that's going to have a heavy influence on the amount of weathering that takes place. Um, so it really kind of depends on the climate and the region at which that external material is constantly exposed to the external environment. Uh, weathering happens on an everyday rate. Okay, Weathering is taking place at all times because there's always one of those agents, either mechanically or chemically, doing work on the materials that are present on this surface. So weathering, the breaking down, the process of chemically or physically breaking down materials on Earth's surface. Mechanical weathering is when we have physical changes taking place to break down that external material. Mechanical weathering typically results in rocks breaking apart from one large chunk into several other smaller chunks. The chemical composition hasn't changed, so it's still the same rock, still the same mineral, still the same material, but it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. As that material gets smaller and smaller and smaller, it starts to expose more and more and more of its surface. So the weathering rate even takes place faster, okay? Now, besides wind and water, uh, so maybe, um, maybe wind constantly blowing sediment onto the face of a rock or the rushing rapids of a river over across the rock surface or rocks bumping into rocks through the falling off of a cliff, okay? Um, those are all basic forms of mechanical weathering. But uh, we can also have such things, mechanical forms, as frost wedging and some plant or biological activity. Uh, frost wedging is when we get um, water to seep into the cracks of a material, a rock or a mineral face, and then freeze. What does water do when it freezes? It expands. And it expands, it exerts a force outwards and creates greater cracks and further breaks down that material physically. Plants are also very, 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 very strong, especially their root system. And very often, you can see some biological activity also physically weather different rock and mineral material on the surface of this planet through root systems growing down and into and throughout the cracks of that rock surface. So mechanical weathering, in short, the physical breaking down the physical breaking down of rock material into smaller chunks of rock material. And as it gets smaller, the rate of weathering increases even greater because you have more surface area exposed to those agents of mechanical weathering, wind, water, plant and biological activity, and frost wedging. So 
Chemical weathering, unlike mechanical weathering, is the actual breaking down of a rock or a mineral, any material on the surface of this planet, through the chemical change of the material. Okay, so we're actually changing the composition. Water and oxygen are the two main agents when we're talking chemical change. Water and oxygen are the ones that are usually doing the work. Now, sometimes we have some naturally occurring acids that also cause a little chemical weathering. But for the majority of the time, it's water and oxygen that are causing the majority of chemical change that is then fueling chemical weathering of external material. One benefit of chemical weathering is that we've got a lot of inorganic nutrients that can be stored within the rock face or mineral face of certain areas on the surface. So, it's nice to have some of those materials replenish into the soil and or the water systems. So there's a little bit of recycling going on. So chemical weathering is necessary. It needs to happen to assist in breaking down some of those trapped inorganic compounds, elements, ions that are housed within those rocks and as they are broken down, and as they do escape that rock face through chemical weathering, they can then infiltrate back down into the groundwater system or water system of any sort. And sometimes they can go ahead and leach back down into the soil and assist in biological activity, biological growth. Okay, so we have weathering basics down, the actual definition of weathering. Okay, we've got mechanical weathering down, we've got chemical weathering down. What can affect the rate of weathering? Think about it for one second. A few different things okay a few different answers here the landform itself okay the landform itself um, if we're talking about something that's really a valley okay or very very steep we're probably gonna have weathering occur at a completely different rate than if it was just some type of flat rock surface okay so the actual shape and formation of the item or the landform that we're talking about could weather at a completely different rate all right completely different rate uh, depending on its shape, depending on its form. Alrighty. Another item is the general rock type. There are some rocks and some minerals that are stronger than others. We saw that. Okay. Limestone, heavily concentrated in calcite, probably going to react with water and some other acids much faster, much faster than granite. Okay. Which is very, very concentrated in quartz, that really strong silicate based mineral. Right? So the rock type also has a great effect on the rate of weathering. All right, our last video topic, soil, which is a mixture, similar to a rock. It's a mixture of weathered rock, organic matter, water, and air. And soil is also capable of supporting plant life. Soil is kind of like human skin. It has many layers, but it's only a very thin, thin covering on the surface of this planet. Uh, material for soil can come from the bedrock that's deep underneath it, all right, or from the cycling of dead organic matter on the top, okay? So the raw materials for soil, what you need are continuously formed from weathered bedrock underneath and the cycling of dead organic matter on top. Now, we break soil into a term that we call horizons, so different layers. The different layers of soils, we refer to them as Horizons, and if you dig a hole deep enough, you can actually see these different layers, okay? Each horizon layer has a different texture and color to it, okay? Uh, there's a good diagram in your book, and I also know in the guided reading that you actually have to describe each one of the layers or horizons for soil. A soil profile is kind of a diagram that's showing the sequencing of those soil horizons. Horizons depend on the makeup of the parent bedrock. Okay, the parent bedrock. So the matter, the materials, the rock that sits underneath the soil. Not only do they uh, develop from the parent bedrock, but also the climate and the kind of organisms that live on the surface and the shape of the earth. Okay, the shape of the landform around there. So a few different factors there that actually can affect the variations of horizons present within a soil sequence or a soil sample, okay? The parent bedrock, the climate, the organisms that are living on top, and the actual shape of the land at which we are analyzing the soil. The United States Department of Agriculture has said that we have 12 basic types of soil, and soils classified, no surprises here, by composition and texture. Okay, so what it's made of, the composition and texture, the physical properties. 
the type of material from which the soil forms, okay, precipitation levels in the area, temperature range, and vegetation, so the plant life above it, all affect the soil type that forms. Some soils form in the same place as their parent bedrock. Okay? Other soils are actually going to form from materials that are carried from distant sources. So rivers and glaciers that carry large amounts of sediment and soil materials and then deposit it in that certain area, creating a very, very rich soil. When a river floods, the sediments are then added to the soil in that area. For example, the Niles River that flooded every year to make the soil in ancient Egypt rich for farming. Uh, glaciers also carry sediments that build soil levels. Okay, so during the last ice advance, glaciers in North America carried materials that became uh, very rich soils once the glaciers then receded. Okay, very last thing here, a little bit about soil conservation. Um, plants and animals are constantly removing elements from the soil. It's just something that we do. Okay, we need to grow, we need to live, so the soil provides us with a lot of those nutrients. Uh, this can be a serious problem though in some agricultural areas if the same crop is grown year after year after year after year in the same field those elements that are needed to support the plant life are depleted so natural forces besides farming can also deplete some of the uh, nutrient levels in these soils in rainy areas and in rainforests the soils tend to be depleted because the rain <laughs> washes it away okay but thankfully, we've got some plant material that's constantly recycling that matter and returning those elements into the soil in those areas. A couple of ways that we can re-add nutrients into the soil, and one common way is to use fertilizers. So like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are common nutrients that we're pumping back into the soil. Uh, farmers can also use natural crop rotation. So corn in the field for a few years, and then maybe plant a little alfalfa, maybe some soy. Uh, maybe get yourself a bean crop going on. Okay, so those are all plant types that naturally reinfuse the soil with needed nutrients. Different crops use different nutrients from the soil, so some crops such as legumes, like your beans, okay, actually retain and keep nutrients down inside of the soil. Soil can be lost, actual soil layers can be lost due to erosion, okay, because the plants that may have covered that area leave, all right. Uh, modern farmers use contour plowing to reduce the erosion level. So we terrace things, all right? And contour plowing furrows grow around the hill, not up and down the slope. Crops may be planted on ridges and rainfall allowed to collect in basins, and eventually that slows the amount of water that's causing erosion, okay? All righty, that does it here for lesson one, weathering and soil. At the end of this video, hopefully you feel good about a general definition for weathering. That's big, okay? A general definition for weathering and some of the agents that can influence weathering. You also need to be able to distinguish between mechanical and chemical weathering, and it basically comes down to one causing physical change, one causing chemical change, but know the agents of each as well. Know the agents of each mechanical and physical. You also need to know a little bit about the factors that affect weathering, or the weathering rate. Last but not least, don't forget about soil, okay? Know a little bit about the structure and the function of the different layers of soil, how those layers are created, maintained, and how we're constantly pumping nutrients back into the soil and trying to actually conserve the structure of the soil, okay? So a little bit about conservation of soil there at the end. Any questions? By all means, contact me. I'll see you guys in class.